Hey friends, my name is Jake. Welcome to Canadian Cutting Edge. Today we're taking a look at the Max Ace Lanus or Lanius. It's a knife that comes in uh, several different colors. Uh, they're all stainless steel frame locks with inserts of G10 in either brown or this camo or black. And then you can get the blade, either black wash on the grind and that swedge, or a stone wash. And uh, so that means six different ways of getting this knife. And I think there's only six. Who knows? There might be more. I got mine from White Mountain Knives. And uh, it's like, uh, what was it? $54? 50 dollars 50 $49.99. Save 10% with the coupon CCE. And it's like $45 US dollars for this knife. 14C28N. So a good blade steel. Better than budget steel. And uh, really nice uh, aspects to this knife. I think there's a lot of good things about this frame lock that you might be interested in. Flipper. And it's even got inlays of carbon fiber. So let's take a good close look at this knife. And the full review is coming to you right now. All right. The first thing I'm going to do is do a size comparison with the Ontario Rat 1. And as you can see, blade length's about the same. Handle's a little bit shorter, but uh, grip area, if we line up the knife right like that, and you look back down here, as you can see, the grip area is not all that much different. Just a little bit smaller. You also have a forward choil on this knife, just like we have a little forward section here. So it's a knife that's got a lot of room in it for a lot of different size hands. It might be... You know, just barely big enough for me. Anybody with definite extra large hands, you might want to do the forward choil thing, and then you've got, you know, a little more knife handle. But a lot of people are going to find this knife very comfortable. Like I said, it's a frame lock. We've got a narrow uh, frame bar here, which I really like. Uh, because then, you know, when you're holding the knife, you can hold it almost any way you want, and you won't end up pushing on that. Uh, frame lock arm and stopping your ability to disengage the blade and open it up. So I like how the frame lock is designed in terms of ease of opening. You get a very small pocket clip. Not super deep. You've got almost an inch of uh, knife sticking out of your pocket when you wear it in a pocket. And let's demonstrate that now. I often forget and it do that very late in the video. So there's a pair of pants, and as you can see, it's a tight fit. Let's see if I can get under there. Whoa, that one's not getting on there that easy. These pants are fairly thick in here, and uh, this pocket clip just doesn't want to go on here. The pants that I'm wearing, like actually on me, I could get it to come on quite well. So you can always pull this spring back and make it not quite so springy, but no matter what you do, because of the way this is made right here, you know, it's coming down to pinch. You've got that uh, inch or so of knife sticking out of your pocket. So there you go. Actually, it's closer to three quarters of an inch, about two centimeters sticking out. But it's stone wash that you see and stone wash here. So it doesn't look like anything awful big in your pocket. So that's not bad. It's not great. So... I'm not calling this pocket clip a pro or a con. Just be aware that it is small. And, um, you know, while it's solid because it's milled into that space, so you only need one screw to keep it in there securely, it is a little bit different than a lot of pocket clips. The pocket clip ac also acts as the over-travel protection uh, because if you start pushing this too far, you end up pushing on the spring of the uh, pocket clip and that helps protect it but you could push this too far out and create a problem with that lock bar you've got that sort of a wedge shape of this handle here coming down and that comes down to more of a tip small steel backspacer here stainless steel this is 420 stainless steel in here all stone washed lanyard option at the end here let's get a close up of this you can see that you've got a hole there that you can uh, feed your paracord through 
Very easy to put in significant size paracord in there, not a problem. And a little bit of jimping on that backspacer. Now they've done some weight reduction, milling out a lot of the steel here and uh, putting the G10 in. On the very inside of the knife, there's no skeletonizing at all, no weight reduction, so it's very smooth in there, very easy to clean the inside of this knife out. You can sort of see how flat that is in there on that shot. Let's try to do the same here. There you go. So you can see there's nothing milled out in there. So I'm taking the knife apart. Uh, they used Loctite on the screws, which was no problem really on this screw because the pivot pin won't spin. But this would spin along, so I had to hold it still and put one screwdriver on each side. And I really don't like doing that, but the screws themselves are actually pretty good quality. And uh, not bad at all. I like them. Let's take this apart here now. I'll focus back down here. There we go. Take that apart. There's the steel ball bearings. And uh, steel detent ball right there. There's 10 ball bearings on each side there. In that nylon housing, lots of lubrication. And as you can see, very simply made and I the only thing I'd change is I don't like this Loctite on the back the screw right there I don't like having to use two screwdrivers and a vise to hold everything so there you go let's put it back together again lockup is exactly where I want a brand new knife to be you've got some cut out there on the lock bar and on this side here, so it's easy to get your thumb in there to disengage the lock when you want to. Alignment, almost perfect. Flipper tab's got a little bit of jimping on it right there. And it's got a cutout section that's also having that black wash on the inside of it. But very great light switch method. And if you push down on just a slight angle, works very well to disengage the blade as well and make it fly open. Detent is very wonderful. This front cutout section has got uh, carbon fiber inlay on both sides. And then you see a satin finish on the flats on the Ricasso there and this flat coming out. The swedge up here has got that black stone wash or the black wash and so does the main bevel here. And it's got that clip point right there. Some people call it a reverse tanto, and I'm going, if it was a reverse tanto, that edge would be sharp. So I just call these clip points. Comes to a very fine point there that's uh, fairly delicate right at the tip. It wouldn't be hard to break off the tip of this blade, at least the, a small part of the tip. Comes nice and thin behind the grind, and there's that Choil up there, your finger choil. You can see the line where the detent ball rides along the ricasso of the blade there. I like it when that's sort of hidden, but it's not a big deal. And uh, the other side here, you've got your Max Ace logo on the uh, pin. So it's a fixed pivot pin. I like that. Three cutout sections here with G10 and two sections cut out there. I'm thinking I'm gonna uh, try to dye these black. There's a black version available and the brown version and this camo version, but they all have the blades the same way with the uh, either mostly stone washed or mostly black washed here. And I don't know, it looks kind of odd having black wash, carbon fiber, and then camo G10 or brown G10. That's why I'm thinking I'm going to dye those black. Of course, I can't take them out to dye them. Being 420 stainless steel, you know, you could just dye them. The, the steel is going to be just fine when you go to dye the G10. Now, the very last thing I do after I've uh, finished editing the video, after I've, you know, d not finished editing, but just about finished editing, I take still pictures that I'm going to put into the video. And uh, that's when I noticed this. Yep, it fell out. 
So you can see how, you know, they've sanded it a little bit to fit in there just right. But uh, I don't see any leftover epoxy or anything on there. It's not going to be any problem at all for me to get that back in there permanently and looking good. It's just that that should not happen. I got to tell you my experiences. I'd like to have left that out, but uh, that wouldn't be honest. And uh, I pride myself in uh, giving you guys a clear, honest, thorough look at the knives. I still recommend it. The hardware, the screws are made to high tolerances. They work well. Nothing wrong with those. Let's go over all of the specs and other details about this knife. And uh, while I'm talking about all the specs, this will be on the screen right there. So what we have, 14 C28 and Sandvik blade, Rockwell 5960, somewhere around there. Um, there's no designer name for this knife. Of course, made by Max Ace. Uh, we've got uh, ball bearings in there. I haven't taken the knife apart yet. So I think they're stainless steel ball bearings, but uh, you'll see the knife taken apart later on in the video. The weight of this knife, 153 grams, 5.4 ounces. The sharpness of the edge from the factory, 175 best, so that's considered sharp. 200 and smaller is a number, meaning the knife edge is fairly sharp. The cutting edge length, 7.5 centimeters, 2.95 inches. Blade length, tipped to the closest spot on the handle, 8.7 centimeters that's uh 3.43 inches the blade thickness is 3.42 millimeters which is 0.1345 inches so just over an eighth of an inch thick blade depth and i do this about an inch up from where the blade edge starts so right about where my fingers are there two and a half centimeters 0.984 of an inch the thickness of the edge behind the grind right here is 0.55 millimeters which is 21 and a half thousandths of an inch. And I didn't measure the grind angle yet, so the grind angle numbers are on the screen, this side and this side. The handle length, and uh, for this, I didn't add in the uh, little extension here for the uh, lanyard hole, just the main steel length. 11.06 centimeters, 4.35 inches, grip area, is around 10 centimeters, just under four inches. The handle thickness, not counting the pocket clip, is 1.15 centimeters, that's 0.452 of an inch. So it feels good in just about any hand with how thick that is. The handle depth, and it's widest right there, not counting the flipper tab, is uh, 3.04 centimeters, 1.2 inches. When the knife is closed, the widest spot is right here. I don't count the flipper tab when I do this. And that is 3.26 centimeters, 1.28 inches. And the total length of this knife from tip to the end of the lanyard option, 20.1 centimeters. That's seven and seven eighths of an inch. So basically you've got almost four inch blade and almost four inch or just over four inch handle. So that's not bad. And the balance point of this knife is, let's move it straight you know, right where you want your balance point to be on a knife like this. So that's quite good. The price of this knife, I got mine from White Mountain Knives. White Mountain Knives is selling for $49.99. Use coupon code CCE to take off 10%. So it's $45 US dollars for this knife. Cheaper than any other place I could find it. Amazon United States has one model for $50. They don't have any other models. Um, Blade HQ, they're selling it for $78, uh, AliExpress, $70, you know. I found this in Canada at Warriors and Wonders for $95 Canadian dollars. Um, Lamnia has this if you're in Europe and you want to buy this. Fit and finish this knife, I think it's pretty good. But the choices of the things, yeah, I just don't really get it that much. If that's carbon fiber, I would like this to be carbon fiber. Or like I said, I'll probably make that black. If you buy the brown versions, then you got a solid G10 that would also dye to black, probably better than this will, because this will always show some of that digital camo. It won't all dye the same color. So it's a lot of videos of, uh, on how to dye G10. 
I like the forward choil. That's a really good, it's a very well done forward choil and it feels really good in hand, secure. I like the little cutout for your thumbs right here. So your thumb fits right in there. If you want to push it forward just a little bit, there's that bit of a ramp there. So it feels good in hand. Nice high saber grind, thin edge, cuts very well. Tip is great for delicate work or if you need to pierce into things, that, that works just fine. All stainless steel stone wash handle, it looks good and it's a comfortable handle. Except for the reverse kind of grip, you know, your hand, my thumb is uncomfortable with that because of that lanyard option. But all the other grips, like, you know, a fist grip or a saber grip, a pinch grip, they're all very comfortable like the regular kind of grips, except for that, like I said, the reverse grip. Decent lanyard option. I, I like it a lot, actually. It's discreet. Well, not really discreet. It, it keeps the lanyard nice and small. doesn't bulk it up on the outside. I like that. And it's right off the end of the handle instead of off the, uh, you know, a hole in the side. So it's done well. Like I said, the alignment's good. Detent's good. Action's good. Lockup's solid. It feels nice in the hand. Easy to clean. Good choice. The cons, basically... If you want to, you know, do reverse grips on knives, this one might not be the best. And the colors. And that's about it for this knife. I really like it. It's built well, easy to use, looks good. And, oh, the only other potential con is, like I said, that pocket clip isn't super deep. So thanks for watching my video. Please comment, like, share, and subscribe. Remember, guys, always cut towards your chums, not your thumbs. Bye for now.